Hey, Orchard Kids, I'm back. Man, does it feel good to say that. I've really missed teaching you guys over these last few weeks. But if I'm being honest, I feel like time has flown by. Don't you? I mean, can you believe we're already in the month of February? Lots of things pop in my head when I think of February. What's the first thing that pops in your head? Well, I think of Valentine's Day. I think of flowers and I think of candy and I think of Valentine's gifts and showing those special people in your life just how much you care about them. So this month, that's exactly what we're going to talk about. Each week this month, we're going to focus on lessons in the Bible where a person showed someone they cared by showing them Christ-like love. So what better month to focus on Christ-like love than in the month of February, the month of love. I love it. Get it? Love. I love it. Come on, show me some love. Oh my goodness. I could go all day with this. Want me to keep going? No? Oh well, okay. Well, we'll get to the lesson then if you don't want me to keep going. I understand. So everybody, grab your Bibles and let's turn to Genesis chapter 33. And let's see what happens in our lesson this week. So in our lesson today, we see two twin brothers, and their names are Jacob and Esau. And these brothers were very different from one another. And as they were growing up, Jacob did some very mean things to Esau. He tricked him a lot. Just like if I were to ask you, what is at the end of a rainbow? What's your answer? Well, most of you probably said a pot of gold, but no, it's a W. I tricked you. You guys weren't thinking about the spelling word of rainbow, were you? I'm so clever. I know, I know. So, okay, maybe Jacob's tricks were much worse than my trick, but you get the idea, right? So there was this one time Jacob did something so mean to Esau that Esau wanted to kill Jacob. So Jacob ran far away to his uncle's house to hide from Esau. And after he got there, he worked really hard and he started his own family. His life got so busy that many years went by, 20 years to be exact. And by this time, Jacob had a large family and he was happy that God had blessed him and protected him, even though he was so far from his own home. But a part of him was still sad. You know why? He hadn't seen his mother or his father or his brother in 20 years. And that's a very long time to be away from the people that you love. And then one day, God told him to go back home and that he would be with him on his journey. So Jacob took his family. He went back to home where he, his parents lived. But then Esau heard that Jacob was coming back. He went to meet him with 400 men. This scared Jacob because he remembered all the bad things he had done to Esau. Don't you think you would be scared too? I would. But Jacob didn't run this time. He prayed and he asked God to save him from Esau because Jacob thought Esau and his 400 men were going to hurt him. He trusted that God would be with him and protect him. So Jacob, he sent his servants to go ahead of him with gifts for Esau and hopes that Esau would be pleased with his gifts and would find favor with him. And this was Jacob's way of offering peace to Esau for the things he had done to him in the past. So then the time came for Jacob to meet his brother. Oh, the suspense, what's gonna happen? Well, Jacob looked up and he saw from far away that his brother was coming. So Jacob ran up and he bowed down to the ground as he got closer to Esau. And do you know what Esau did? Genesis 33, 4 says, But Esau ran to meet Jacob. He hugged him and he threw his arms around him, around his neck, and he kissed him and they cried with joy. Esau wasn't angry. He was happy to see him. But the most important thing to see here is that with God's help, Jacob's life had been saved and Esau accepted Jacob's offering of peace. So you see, the focus on today's lesson is not how these brothers came to have their many problems, because there were a lot, but on how God made peace 
between these two brothers. Not only did God make peace between Jacob and Esau, but more importantly, God made peace with all of us by sending Jesus so we can live in eternity with him. God loves us so much that he sent his son to die the death that we deserve so that we could have forgiveness for every sin we've ever committed. So if God is willing to forgive you and me for the mistakes we've made, shouldn't we also do the same for those who've hurt us? God answers this simple question for us in our Bible verse for this month. Check it out. Our Bible verse is, Love one another as I have loved you. John 13, 34. Let's say it together one more time. Love one another as I have loved you. John 13, 34. Guys, God loved us so much, He forgave us. So let's remember this and let's show that same forgiveness to those around us. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, God, we love you so much and we are so thankful that you love us, God. Even though you don't need us, God, you love us and you have saved us through your son, Jesus. You made peace with us through him and through his death on the cross. And we are just so thankful, God. Let us remember your forgiveness of our sins. Let us repent when we sin, God, and let us ask that forgiveness. And let us forgive the others when they wrong us and when they hurt us. We love you so much. In your name we pray. Amen. All right, guys, it's been fun, and it's gonna get even more fun. We are about to worship, so let's stand up and let's sing our praises to God. Bye, you guys. You spoke one word, and the dark became light. I believe it, I believe it, yeah. You spoke my name, and my heart came to life. I believe it, I believe it, yeah. I wanna sing about it. I wanna scream and shout it. I'm gonna sing it right now.
I do, I keep on trusting, trusting, trusting in you. 